Praise the Lord. Buana asifiwe. Let's just begin by praying. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness, your love, your mercy over us, O oh God. We thank you, Father. You are from everlasting to everlasting, and that means, Lord, anything in between is already covered, O oh God. Whether we feel like it or not, or whether it's, it manifests or not, we stand by faith, O oh God, knowing that you've got everything covered. Father God, as we begin this broadcast, we pray that it would encourage those who are sick and have been waiting upon you for healing as well as their family members and their friends as well, O oh, Father God. I pray that this message would release somebody from the yoke of sickness, O oh, Father, for your word says that by your stripes we are healed. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that has made atonement for us. And thank you, O oh, Father, that all the promises of the cross are yes and amen, and they come through for us even today, O oh, Father God, because we love you and we've chosen you, O oh, God. So even as we walk with you, Father, encourage your church, strengthen your children, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. So today, um, I just want to talk about uh, something that's been weighing heavily on my heart. And this is the issue of when sickness tarries. Um, to tarry is to take long, okay? I know some of us say tarry, but it's not to tarry, it's to tarry, okay? So to tarry is to put things together and add them up. To tarry is to delay, okay? So when sickness tarries. Uh, sometimes you may hear this word used, if the Lord tarries. If the Lord tarries. So if the Lord tarries refers to, um, should Jesus take long to come back? Should the Lord take long to return? And like what we're expecting for him to come. So hopefully this message will encourage some also to be set free. Now, one of the biggest lies that I've seen people just speak very, very loosely and very, very, um, let me say without knowledge is just saying healed in Jesus name. Yes, we are healed in Jesus name. That's a fact because Jesus died on Calvary. And for that reason, we are already healed whether the sickness has manifested or not. Uh, so we are healed even before the sickness manifests. And even when the sickness tries to manifest, we are already healed. So what happens uh, in the event that, you know, um, you're praying for someone who's sick, you lay hands on them. The Bible says you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So when you lay hands on somebody and they don't recover, is the word of God a lie? Uh, is it that we've misunderstood? Is it that that was like a parable? Um, the answer is that it is not. If you find that you lay hands on somebody and they do not recover instantly, the Bible actually talks about this phenomenon in um, in uh, Isaiah chapter 61, uh, verse 1 and verse 2. If you read it carefully, it talks about two different kinds of people, and we teach this during our Sozo sessions, that if someone lays hands on you or you lay hands on yourself and you do not recover instantly um, from any sickness or maybe just in a little while from sickness, then it means that you have gone from being uh, just a captive to being a prisoner because the bible talks about captives and prisoners in isaiah 61 verse 1 and 2 it talks about captives and it talks about prisoners yeah so it talks about what you declare to the captive what you declare to the prisoner actually it talks about setting free the, the, the prisoner and declaring freedom for the captive so laying hands on somebody and declaring by the stripes of jesus you're healed or right now i speak healing in the name of jesus christ or by the blood of jesus right now you're healed if it does not manifest if it let's begin with if it manifests because it's supposed to manifest instantly because that's the promise of the lord then if it manifests instantly, then the captive has been set free according to the word of God. But if it does not manifest, then it means either it's going to take a little long, so just keep proclaiming it, but a little long refers to like within the day pretty much or, you know, 48 hours. Really, it will not take more than uh, just a few days for healing to manifest. If it does not manifest within just a few days, by a few days, I know some of you are more patient than others, so let me state, within about three days to seven days, healing should be able to manifest, but instantly the person should be able to feel a little bit better. They should register that they feel a little better so one of the symptoms should at least move you know and 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 be gotten rid of for example if somebody has a flu yeah which a lot of us also don't think that it's sickness which is a big big problem for us um if somebody has the flu for example and you lay hands on them and you declare right now i speak healing upon you in the name of jesus christ or you know i i speak a release right now by the blood of jesus according to what but then you know you don't just declare healing on people you need to listen to the Holy Spirit. He's the helper to show you what to do, what to say, and what you're dealing with. So learn to listen. Eh? Don't just go. Don't just go. Yeah. First of all, by the way, even for me, one of the things I don't do, I don't lay hands on everybody. You know, I, the Lord has to tell me, lay hands on them. Yeah. There are times you'll not lay hands. There are times you'll not visit. There's someone wanted me to visit somebody the other day. And the Lord said, do not dare go and visit that person. You know, because of this and that and the other, which I will not say. 
But we need to have a lot of wisdom when we're dealing with spiritual things so that then we may be able to also to understand. So if healing does not manifest immediately, you need to also ask God, what is it? But to save yourself the trouble, learn to listen to God. I don't know why the children of God don't want to listen to God. I, I'm not sure whether it's a confidence issue or whether it's a laziness issue or whether it's a teaching issue, but the Bible says very clearly, my sheep know my voice. Yeah. My sheep know my voice and they obey the Lord as well. Yeah. So not only do we know his voice, but we love his voice and we follow his voice. There is no shortcut, but then in every teaching that you find me releasing every time, I'll always point to listening to the Holy Spirit for yourself because there are no shortcuts. It's a personal journey. That's why it's called Jesus is a personal savior of my life. He's not a collective savior. He is, okay, generally a savior. But when you accept Jesus, you accept him, you hear his voice and you accept him at that moment for yourself as your savior and your Lord. And so you have to learn to walk with him. So the first thing you do when you're praying for somebody who's not well, the first thing you do is you ask the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit, I'm dealing with a spiritual matter. You are the Spirit of God. Reveal to me how I need to go about it. Sometimes they just tell you, just lay hands on them. Sometimes by there, I lay hands on someone and begin to cry. You know, and it's not planned. Eh? Nobody plans at you, oh, let me lay hands on someone and start crying. No, but there are times I just lay hands on somebody and just begin, tears just begin to stream down my, my whatever, my eyes. Sometimes I feel the pain so heavily, I begin to actually sob and really, really weep and call on the Lord. And in those kind of situations, by the way, you will find that very often I'll go through to the very, you know, like even be there five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and I'm just crying, 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 crying. And then when I'm done, I say, it's done. Thank you, Jesus, you know, or the person will receive an assignment. So it's not everything you just say healed, healed, healed or whatever it is. Because again, remember, healing comes from God. Eh? So we are not the ones who heal people. So how are you there going saying healed, healed, healed? Yeah, unless you're standing on just the word of God. But really, the Bible also calls for discernment. So it's important to also learn what you're dealing with. Because also the other thing that we are doing is that we go, we tell people, oh, you know, Jesus heals, da, da, da. then we pray for them. Then they get discouraged when nothing seems to manifest. But we also get discouraged thinking there's something wrong with us. That's why there's no healing that is taking place. One of the things the Lord has taught me very, very clearly is that... Uh, um, uh, you know, we, we, we just, we, we, we have to be very, very careful with these kind of things because then people can even lose their faith. They can lose their faith. You can lose your faith. And one of the things by the way for me, I do is if I lay hands on someone and they're not healed, I'm not the healer. So I don't catch feelings. Why am I catching feelings if I have no healing power? Yeah. It's God who heals. Yeah. It's God who heals. And the environment has to be right for God to be able to heal. The environment has to be right for God to be able to heal. What is the right environment for healing to take place? Number one, it's very helpful if the person is born again. If they are not born again, you can ask them if they want to receive Jesus as Savior and Lord, but you also need to be able to discern that they don't want to just receive Jesus as Savior and Lord so that they can be healed, because also that doesn't work. That's trying to trick the Holy Spirit. It doesn't work that way. Because remember, these promises are promises that are given to the children of God, okay? Without the work of the cross, there is no power of the cross. Sometimes the Lord does manifest through healing, an unbeliever, so that then they have faith in him that they are that the Lord has come through. The other thing about the environment is what is the cause of the sickness? Sometimes sickness will come as a result of sin. If sickness comes as a result of sin, so it's not just an attack or just an infection or something like that, if it comes as a result of sin, then the person has to turn away from their sin to be able to be forgiven and then to be able to ask God for forgiveness and then healing is able to manifest. There are cases where the Lord tells me, no, I'll not remove this sickness from them because this person was walking in sin and if this sickness is removed, they'll continue to walk in sin and they'll go to hell. So as a result, the sickness persists, the sickness remains. The other uh, thing that's necessary for the environment is an environment of thanksgiving. Just an environment of thanksgiving, an environment that says, Lord, whether you heal me in this life or in the life after, I love you not because of what you do for me, but because of who you are. So you just choose, you know, I'm going to love the Lord, whether the sickness manifests, uh, stop, stop manifesting, or whether the sickness, um, you know, continues to manifest. At the end of the day, I am healed. Obviously, there's also the situation of faith, yeah? Sometimes, by the way, in terms of this second point that I was giving, when people die, a lot of times we always think, oh, I prayed for so-and-so and then they died. Well, did you know that there is no sickness in heaven? 
that there is no sickness beyond life. Actually, even in hell, there is no sickness. There's only a lot of fire. But there's no sickness for those who have already passed on. Sickness is only to this earthen vessel. So guess what? Sometimes you'll pray for somebody and the Lord will give them eternal healing, which comes in the form of, of um, you know, uh, giving their life to Jesus Christ uh, and, and really just moving on to the next life. Um, it's also critical that in the situation of healing that we maintain an attitude of thanksgiving. If you do not maintain an attitude of thanksgiving, but have, have an entitled attitude of bitterness or anger and those kind of things, then there is no healing that's going to manifest because the environment is not right. Healing is a supernatural thing. Healing will take place in an environment that is sanctified for the Lord to be able to move so that it may come through the power of the Holy Spirit and by the blood of Jesus Christ to bring healing. Also, the other thing that I really highly encourage is have an environment where someone is listening to audio scripture. Switch on the word of God. Let it play, let it play, let it play. And just keep listening. Let the person keep listening to the word of God, what the word of God says. You know, um, there's someone who once preached, and I believe in this. And they said that the word of God is healing in itself. Remember, Jesus sent his word and healed our diseases. That's what the word of God says. He, he sent his word and healed our diseases. So by the steps of Jesus, we are then healed. So basically, if you read the word of God in the morning, read the word of God after your lunch, read the word of God in the evening, already healing should be able to manifest based on the fact that you have taken medicine three times in a day or more, more times than that in a day. But you can take the word of God as medication. Yeah, you can do that also before any meal. You can decide it's a kind of medication you'll take before any meal. So read the word of God in the morning. Read the word of God uh, before you have your lunch. Read the word of God in the evening as part of your medi med medicine uh, pro progress and process. The other thing we need to be able to know is that a lot of times healing is also very, very very gradual. Uh, John G. Lake had his healing rooms in Spokane in uh, Washington state. And one of the things he did is that the sick were brought and they stayed in those healing rooms and they, they would take maybe a scan or take, um, you know, a uh, what is it, um, uh, whatever, CT scan or the, all those things, whatever it's called, those radiography things. Anyway, they would, take, they would take them and then they would begin the prayer process. And they found that every week when they would, um, you know, pray, pray for the person, every week when they would take um, other scans and, and other, you know, x-rays, that's what I was trying to remember, other x-rays and everything, they would sometimes find that in some cases, the healing was manifesting bit by bit. So the sickness region, the sickness area was getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So the person may not necessarily feel it, but sometimes it's progressive. Why does God choose to do that? I'll try to answer this as best as I can, but of course, I'm very, very limited because of being human. There are questions about healing that we'll only find out in the life after. So in some cases, um, you know, the Lord uh, decides to take the progressive route. And the reason why the Lord decides to take that progressive route or route is because he wants the person to grow in their faith so that that sickness, it does not just come and go like that, but really it achieves what it was meant to also achieve. Whatever the enemy intended for evil, God then uses, uses it to turn things around for good. So there are times that the Lord will choose the gradual uh, route or route for healing. And the reason for that, that is so that then you can learn the lesson that you need to learn. In that case, then I encourage, let us try and learn as quickly as possible. Because any time that sickness gets into your life, there is a reason why. One of the things I do in terms of for me, if I, I get sick, which is very, very rare, then the first thing I normally do, even before, I, no, normally by there, I'll be very quick to say, hey, not today, Satan. In the name of Jesus, I'm healed. I'll say that instantly. Actually, that's my first reaction. If I get a stomach ache, if I get a headache, even if it's one of those that just sh shoots in my head, choop, and then disappears, I say, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke it or whatever the, the Holy Spirit puts in my heart. If it persists, then normally what I will do is I'll ask God, what is Satan using? What is the legal ground? And where did it come through? Which doorway did, did the enemy use? Now, we need to be aware that there's also sickness that comes as a result of disobedience, like I said, sin, but also things like dishonor. Yeah, If you have not watched that video about honoring uh, your spiritual authority and honoring parents and honoring others, you really need to, to watch it. Because um, one of the things uh, for me that I've learned is also that there's some sickness that comes as a result of dishonor. 
you will find that uh, a child can be sick because they dishonored their teacher. You know, maybe they insulted their teacher or insulted an older person. Um, someone can be sick because they dishonored their spiritual authority. Someone can be sick because they dishonored their parents. Someone can be sick, and remember, dishonoring parents actually leads to death too, eh? not just sickness. But sickness can sometimes come as a result of dishonor and disrespect. And it's critical to then check that. And the goodness with the Lord is, once you ask the Holy Spirit and you listen, if, well, he will normally tell you, and if pride does not get in the way, the moment that you resolve it and you're truly sorry, then the sickness will just vanish without even declaring, by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Of course, there's sickness that is also as a result of things like witchcraft, um, things like, you know, um, people chanting things against you. But here's what sometimes we don't know. Sometimes there's sickness as a result of people in the church gossiping about you. Actually, the kind of sickness that comes as a result of people in the church gossiping about you is normally it feels like, like normally a lot of back kicks will normally be as a result of that. It feels like you're being stabbed. You know the backstabbing story? Yes. So sometimes sickness can actually be as a result of people that are gossiping about you or talking about you. And sometimes they can even be just collectively saying things and Satan then picks that information and uses it to accuse you. Yeah. And, you know, things but they are simple as, you know, if I hold hands with a friend of mine or maybe you're not even holding hands, but we're in discussions and we say she's so sick. She's so sick. What's wrong with her? What's her problem? She's so sick. Just that declaration alone, I know we want to say sick in terms of, as in that's nasty or whatever it is, the terminologies we are using, but Satan takes it literally and takes it before the courtrooms of heaven. And in such a case, you will need to go before the courtrooms of heaven to be able to get your freedom out of there. And by there, this includes some problems. There are problems some places you have. Maybe you might not be physically sick, but you're feeling off. Something's not right. You know, you're just, something's wrong. Something's wrong. You can't say it's a physical sickness, but something's wrong. And a lot of times, it will be either jealousies within the people around you or gossip uh, within the people around you. And what happens is that they are throwing soulish attacks again you. In the case of witchcraft, we must remember that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. It is impossible for witchcraft, contrary to what we've been told. You know, we've been told that if you don't believe in witchcraft, then it will not affect you. That is a lie from the pits of hell, okay? That's Satan himself lying. It doesn't matter whether you believe in witchcraft or not, yeah? Because you don't believe in witchcraft, meaning that you believe in doing the witchcraft yourself, okay? Witchcraft is there, okay? It's a fact. Fact. Witchcraft is there. However, we need to be able to then understand how then do I deal with witchcraft? Clearly, if you're not, if you're walking well with the Lord, if you're walking right with the Lord, if you're not disobeying the Lord, and you know, if you're married, um, your husband is also walking well with the Lord, because sometimes if your husband is not walking with God, it also opens you as a wife uh, to the enemy, yeah? If you're, you're not married, but your dad is not walking right with the Lord, it opens the door for the rest of the family, because remember, this is the priest, okay? So, you need to be able to understand um, what what the enemy is using in terms of he cannot get through unless there's a doorway, okay? So you need to be able to understand that there is no way, no matter how potent the witchcraft is, if there is no open doorway in your life, if there is no legal ground for Satan to use, the spiritual laws mean that he cannot penetrate. So they can come, they can, you know, and by the way, you know, I hear Christians saying all sorts of things like, oh, we came, we found a dead rat, and then we found some bones, and we found some things written and some blood. And then you are scared of taking them. Well, it's just that they are unhygienic, so you don't attach them. So you might want to just maybe take a newspaper. But if you come and leave such things in my house, I will take a newspaper, I will hold them, and I will go and throw them into the toilet. Because nothing is going to happen to me because I touch them. I am a child of God. I am anointed. The moment I touch them, that witchcraft or whatever it is, it is completely powerless. In fact, the moment it even comes near my door, it goes back to that person three, seven different ways, the Bible says, okay? So the problem with us is that a lot of times, like, oh, you know, I need to go call the pastor, nee, 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 nee. oh, because, you know, this witchcraft. So the moment you begin to think that that witchcraft is more powerful than Christ in you, then you actually give Satan the legal ground, and that's how those things come through. 
So, you know, by the way, for me, I've had people tell me, utajua, wachawi, utajua, sijui, what I say, oh, really, bring it, bring it. You will know my God. You will know the God that I stand for. And by the way, in such cases, I just say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your protection. I thank you because you're a shield. Show yourself. I don't need to engage in that. I don't really need to engage in that because day by day, every single day, what I'm doing is I'm depositing prayer. And on the day that I need to do a withdrawal, I can just simply do a withdrawal. But the greatest war against the enemy is all always to be able to work with God. So one of the things that you will find, especially things to do with witchcraft, if it comes through, the other thing you also need to be able to go and check is where is it coming through? Where is it coming through? You need also to be able to, to, to deal with, and that's why we've been trying to help people to deal with um, any altars. Because if your family has had altars of witchcraft, if your family has had altars of disobedient, disobedience and you have not destroyed them, then typically what happens is that Satan will attach himself to a generation before you, four generations before you, and he's in business. And he's able to get through to you even though today you are walking with God. Because of your ignorance, you have to deal with wicked foundations of your life. And remember, any foundations of our lives are not just in this generation, but they go back generations. So that's why you have to do things like bloodline cleansing. That's why you have to do things like dealing with generational altars so that you can then be able to raise up the altar for the Lord. So those are the key things that I need to just state in terms of, oh, oh dear, how can I forget this one? Thank God for the Holy Spirit. A lot of sickness also comes as a result of bitterness and unforgiveness. If you don't forgive somebody, the Bible actually says that God himself will hand you over to the tormentor. That is Matthew 18, I believe it's verse 34 and 35, that talks about God himself will hand you over to the tormentor. But you need to read from verse 21. Matthew 18 from verse 21 to 35. There is no healing without forgiving. You have to forgive. And one of the things we need to know is that when you're sick, one of the things that happens, especially when you're very sick, is that you get to know your true friends, yeah? Because people will visit you, you know, and, uh, you know, people will be there for you and everything. And sometimes you might find that you've been there for people, but on the time that you yourself are sick, all of a sudden there's no one around you. Guard your heart, for out of it flows all the issues of life. If you don't guard your heart, the enemy will use that to attack you. The fact that your friends are not coming to see you, the fact that your pastor has not made time to come and see you, the fact that your cell does not come to see you, the enemy will use that. It could just be that people are very, very busy, but a lot of times, a lot of us are caught up in a lot of drama, um, of, you know, um, drama of, 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 you know, it could be anything, yeah? It could be anything. It doesn't necessarily mean that if people don't come to see you that they don't love you that they don't want to be there with you that they don't you know it could be just about anything that has gotten people caught up have a clean heart just have a clean heart and by the way learn to prepare yourself to be aware that the only one who if they ever abandon you um you know it should affect you is jesus himself because anyone will abandon you. in fact there's even a joke that when you're in trouble even your own shadow will abandon you anyone can abandon you even a child a parent anyone can abandon you but we need to be aware that Jesus does not abandon us. And even if you're feeling abandoned, you have to have the faith to know that Jesus is right there. So if nobody's coming to see you in hospital, if nobody is coming to visit you, at the end of the day, you need to remember Jesus is right there. He does not leave. He does not go anywhere. He promised to be with you in trouble. And in this particular trouble, he's right there. So hold on to him and tell him, thank you, Jesus, that even when nobody's visiting me, at least you, Jesus, are visiting me. When people are getting tired, you, you are not getting tired, Jesus. And I thank you and use that sickness situation to grow with the Lord so that by the time you're coming out of it and on the other side and victorious, you're able to be so intimate with God because you've learned that he's the one who's really there. You know, harness that relationship. Hold on to him. Just talk to him. Say, thank you, Jesus. Even when the nurse is not here, you're here. Jesus, I thank you. Stick closer than any brother, closer than any friend. You've promised to be with me in trouble. So if there's a time that maybe I thought you were not there for me, right now I'm in trouble and the Bible says, you're here. So I thank you. I'm not seeing you, but I thank you because you're here. And talk to him as one who is really, really close and grow close with him. A lot of bitterness actually will normally lead to lack of healing. There's even a case, I forget who it is, but there was a lady who was sick 
and I think she did a book and she said, you know, that uh, when she was sick, people didn't come to see her. Then she died. And when she died, she went to hell. And when she asked God, why am I in hell? God told her it's because of her bitterness that she ended up in hell. Be very wary of bitterness. The other thing that is critical to do, so forgive, forgive, forgive so that you can be set free and so that you're not uh, given to the tormentor. Because remember, it's God himself who gives you to the tormentor. So he'll be binding Satan and he's looking at you. He's like, what did I do? I did nothing. It's God who did something. What are you going to do if God hands you over to the tormentor? And sickness is torment. The other thing is to proclaim that you're healed. Whether you see it or not, you're healed. And stop calling things my ulcers, my cancer, stream, my homa. You know those things that we do. We are so quick to claim sickness. Eh? My headache, my sinuses, my allergies. Whose? No, they are not yours. Call them this allergy and say it's under the blood of Jesus and it is defeated and it is done, whether today or another time. I remember I developed some allergy problems at some point in my life uh, with my sinuses and they really used to disturb me. I prayed and prayed and prayed and they wouldn't go away. I remember asking God why they won't go away. And then, of course, you know, you have to be very careful not to be bitter with God. Like, God, why aren't you healing me? I've tried. I've been seeking you and nothing is happening. So then um, the Lord taught me something to just have faith. So I left it at the throne. <coughs> I left it at his throne, at his feet. And I said, God, whenever it is that you will heal me. I know it is already done and I believe it's already done. And I can't even tell you at what point it stopped. But one day I was praying and then God asked me, have you realized you've not been getting any sinus pains? I said, actually it stopped. It totally stopped. Praise be to God. And then of course, the other thing we always need to remember, Jesus said to the sick man, go away and be, uh, because you've, you've, you've been made whole and be careful lest the worst thing come upon you. When the Lord has healed you, especially of these, but even the small ailments, really, at the end of the day, no matter what happens, you cannot go back to the life you knew. You cannot go back to a life of sin because the Bible promises that a worse thing will come upon you. So we have to be very careful about that. We cannot allow ourselves to get into situations where a worse thing comes upon us. We have to be very, very careful with that. So continue to proclaim healing. Continue to stand on the promises of the Lord. But really, walk with God. Walk with God, be obedient so that that way you don't even have to encounter those things. And when you do, it's an opportunity to exercise your faith and to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He's a faithful God. For all of you who are trusting God for healing, let me just pray for you right now. Heavenly Father, I thank you for each person who is watching, O oh Lord Jehovah God. I want to just pray right now, O oh God, by faith. I stretch out my hand towards them right now, Father. And right now, I want to pray for favor. I want to pray for mercy, Lord. Whatever it is that the enemy is using, Father, in the name of Jesus and through the mercies of God, through Christ Jesus the King, I speak a nullification right now. Father God, may you minister deeply to their soul and to their spirit, Lord, that their spirit and their soul may, may, may prosper and may thrive, O God, in all ways, O Father God. Minister to them, O God, on anything that needs to change, O Father, King of glory. Minister to them, O God, on anything that the enemy is using, habits, behaviors, Father God, any fear of dishonor or disrespect or whatever it is, oh Father God, cause them, oh God, to make amends even through the blood of Jesus Christ, oh God. And right now, through the name of the Father and of the Son of the, and of the living Spirit of God, right now, I declare healing right now. Father, let it manifest for your glory, oh God. Let your anointing be heavily upon this video, oh God, and let your children hear clearly, oh God, even as you speak into their hearts, oh God. Father, take this word. Oh God, that you have released and let it be relevant to every person, wherever they are. And Lord God, if there have been any deafness at all in the spiritual realm, let it be unlocked now in the name of Jesus Christ and let the children of God hear you and hearken to your voice, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you so much. Thank you for watching. Please share the video with others as well. Sickness is a major, major thing that the enemy is using. Um, and there's a lot of struggle and people are really, really hurting. Um, may the Lord come through for you. But remember also to trust in the Lord. You may, you may have a doctor around you, but healing comes from the Lord. So trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In everything, do acknowledge him and he will direct your path. God bless you so much. For those of you who are coming for the women's conference, I'm heading out there. So we'll we will see you there at um, uh, 
Yes, at, at uh, Pastor, Pastor Nelly's church, okay? We put the flyer up, so see you at Feather Estate shortly. Amen. God bless you guys so much. You've got revival in the evening as well. So let's get engaged, let's get involved, and let us receive from the Lord in a very powerful way. God bless you guys. Thank you for watching. Somebody asked if I could teach about, um, you know, bloodlines, cleansing bloodlines and altars. It's not something I can just do on a video. You know, that's why we keep asking you guys to come in for those meetings so that we can take you through them, you know? If you've noticed, those meetings will normally take uh, two to three days to be able to teach. So it's not something I can just put on a video. God bless you guys so much. Karimi Jaggi, uh, yes, we have been putting it on YouTube, but contrary to expectations, um, our YouTube channel still has just a thousand people. I don't know what's going on with that. Our viewership, you find a video has 74 views at most. So I'd also challenge you guys to also invite people to like the channel and to like the page and everything. Yeah, it's Apostle Kathy Kageni Uganga. That is the YouTube channel. Karibu Nisana. God bless you. Let's continue walking with the Lord. Remember of all tools of warfare you can ever use, the most powerful is to obey the Lord in everything and not walk in your own ways. Walk with the Lord in even the small things like how you speak what you do, your plans and everything, how you dress. Let it glorify the Father in heaven. And of course, never, ever, ever think that you have arrived. Always remember we are just but flesh and day by day to live in this body is Christ and to die, of course, is gain. God bless you guys so much.